Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and today I would like to show you one of the most famous games in the chess history, and the game took place in Breslau uh, 1912 uh, in Germany, however, nowadays it's Wrocław in Poland, and it was played between Frank James Marshall and Stefan Levitsky, and Frank James Marshall, uh, the strongest uh, American chess player at that time, so he was ranked number seven in the world, in 1912 uh, with the ranking estimated ranking by uh, you know chessmetrics.com uh, website 2720 and he was already very experienced uh, 34 years old and he's gonna play as black and what he said about this game because there is a legend that after the game after the final move um, the spectators throw the, the gold pieces gold coins uh, on the board for some reason maybe they had some bets uh, or, or something I'm not sure about that but it's a beautiful legend and Frank Marshall uh, wrote in his book about this incident perhaps you have heard about this game which so excited the spectators that they showered me with gold pieces I have often been asked whether this really happened the answer is yes that is what happened literally so uh, I don't see the reason that Frank Marshall could lie about that, but historians have, you know, different opinions. So uh, believe it or not, but this uh, story is, uh, is going to always be connected to that game. And who was Stefan Levitsky? Uh, definitely very strong Russian master. Uh, his ranking at the time uh, 2590. That means 21st place in the world. He was 36 years old and he gonna play as white. And what do we know more about Stepan? He was as a youngster, he, he wanted to go to some war. So he chose um, Greco-Turkish 30 days war under General Garibaldi. So that was his first achievement in his life and he was um, the strongest player in Moscow. However, he didn't live in Moscow often, uh, but he won a couple of tournaments there and also he was giving the blind simultan game. So imagine, this was the guy who could play, uh, you know, uh, without watching on the chess boards and he played with six chess players at the same time. So six chess boards, that's what I found the information. And also about 1911, 1912 years, how strong he was at that time. Uh, he won St. Petersburg tournament for uh, amateurs in, uh, you know, all Russians could, could come and compete there. And so, for example, Alexander Flamberg, I had the video, if you are interested, I had the video about Alexander Flamberg already very strong player from Warsaw and and then one month after Breslau tournament he got the third place in very serious uh, 1912 Vilnius tournament and he was ahead of Alexander Aliehin and Nimzovich, Aaron Nimzovich and uh, with Aliehin rising star uh, rising Russian star still you know 20 years old but he won with Aliehin twice Okay, so definitely very strong player. And, and yeah, that's all. So let's see this game and let's see this spectacular move, which is considered to be the third best move in the chess history. So that's going to be interesting. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. Levitsky open with d4 and now Marshall play e6, inviting Levitsky maybe to French defense. And uh, here we have e4 and d5, so French defense, knight on c3, and now the most popular moves, of course, knight on f6 uh, or a bishop on b4, Vinaver variation. However, here, Marshall play Marshall Gambit in Sicilian defense. Yeah, you heard it right, Sicilian defense after c5. We have knight on f3, knight on c6, and now everything is clear. Uh, if we play something like e4, c5, and now knight f3, e6, and d4, d5, we're gonna have uh, Marshall's gambit in Sicilian defense. And then, for example, knight on c3, and the game can continue. So Marshall a bit tricked his opponent and he found the, the variation and the moves order 
and then get to his his position how he like to play we have e takes on d5 e takes on d5 and now bishop e2 by levitsky knight on f6 we have castle and bishop on e7 bishop on g5 developing the bishop and castle by frank marshall and now d takes on c5 and black didn't take this pawn uh, black first play bishop on e6 strengthening the central pawn is isolated pawn um, so need a bit of more protection and actually in this position white could play some not really natural move knight on a4 and try to defend um, this pawn uh, the pawn maybe couldn't be defended but it's also not easy to get it so for example queen on a5 b3 and now knight on e4 and after exchanging the bishops uh, on e7 then bishop d3 attacking the knight and then exchange the knights and uh, winning back the pawn so black would have to play with this isolated pawn and already exchange two minor pieces so uh, white would be pretty good here and probably uh, could have very very comfortable game however Levitsky here uh, got some idea to exchange this bishop uh, for the knight so he played knight on d4 not really the best move actually losing all the initiative uh, and here bishop on c5 and knight on e6 and frank marshall in his book wrote that you know the move f takes on e6 opens the the file f file for his attacks and it's very comfortable because black now you know develop the piece without the moving so uh, pretty nice and also this isolated pawn get the friend on e6 and yes it's the weakness but it's not easy weakness to exploit uh, Levitsky tried to do it so he played bishop on g4 as bishop can't be taken because the knight is pinned and now we have queen on d6 unpinning the knight bishop on h3 so knight can't take it now and now we have rook a on e8 and queen on d2 and also in the book marshall say that a queen on d3 could be probably better uh, and why he said so because bishop on b4 pinning this knight and it's very uncomfortable uh, pin uh, so uh, for example if uh, white plays something you know something passive like let's say king on h1 or uh, other passive moves then yes d4 doesn't work because bishop f6 with the protection uh, on c3 so g takes on f6 and now knight on e4 with attack on the queen so queen would have to go to d5 queen e2 and the game could continue uh it's quite complicated but with equal chances but black could play something better than d4 bishop takes on c3 first and then after queen on c3 knight on e4 attacking the queen attacking the bishop so a uh, queen have to be moved and now queen e5 attacking the the bishop and after bishop moves then this is a free pawn and then if the rooks move then another pawn can fall so uh, that's definitely better for black so this is why in this position Levitsky didn't like it much so he exchanged this bishop as this bishop doing nothing now it's pinning nothing so it just stayed there and it's quite vulnerable so a uh, bishop takes on f6 we have rook takes on f6 and now Levitsky play rook a on d1 however this was his chance uh, in the game to play a3 and you know liquidate the problem with this pin because this is very very unpleasant pin so uh, black would have to just exchange this bishop and then everything would be fine for white or go something like bishop on a5 and then knight on e4 with attack on the queen and for example bishop d2 knight on d6 attacking the rook attacking the pawn so uh, e7 g3 and the game can continue and both sides have the quite equal chances and uh, the game could continue however rook a on d1 uh, gives some initiative to black so we have queen on c5 now uh, there is some pressure on the on the knight and white has to do something about that they're gonna lose the pawn what to do so uh, levitsky found some 
quite nice interesting way he played queen on e2 and after bishop takes on c3 b takes on c3 frank marshall take um, the pawn on c3 and levitsky could play rook on d5 so taking the pawn uh, because uh, this pawn is pinned okay so uh, black would just lose the rook and probably the game uh, and here Frank Marshall instead of taking of course play knight on d4 attacking the queen so uh, here Levitsky have to do something um, definitely have to do something about that and it's very dangerous position and there is actually only one move which still uh, it's good for white so uh, if you want to you know uh, try your skills feel free to pause the video right now and find the only continuation for white which is not losing it's not easy but it's very good you know exercise uh, to find the the only move and the continuation how white still can play this game while i enjoy my cup of tea So actually there is only one move as I said and this move is queen on e4 queen on e4 so a queen have to be moved here and now uh, e takes on d5 of course queen on e8 rook f8 queen h5 and everything is fine uh, both sides can play and there is you know nobody has any advantage this queen actually protects the, the this this squares uh, rooks are exchanged so uh, it's pretty much uh, quite okay and also after queen on e4 black can complicate the things and can complicate really badly rook on f4 can be played and then uh, the only move you have to find is queen on e5 but actually there is some problem with that after for example queen on c4 attacking the rook twice there are some tactics with the rook and with the check and white can't do much about that but the position is still okay for white so white just have to be active rook on d7 threatening the checkmate so uh, giving the exchange it, it can't be saved uh, in the proper way so knight on e2 with check king h1 and knight g3 with check and uh, of course this is losing that's gonna be a checkmate so the only move is h takes on g3 and now queen f1 uh, king h2 and now uh, white have some initiative so black have to play defensive moves and the only move is actually rook on f6 protecting uh, e6 twice because it's attacked twice uh, and also uh, blocking the queen from reaching the checkmate on g7 uh, but white can play now queen on c7 threatening some uh, checkmate uh, ideas here and also winning the pawns and uh, black have to play rook on g6 and the game is quite complicated but white have some uh, some chances here uh it's uh, the engine showed zero but zero means you know anything can happen it's it's quite complicated uh, and a lot of things can happen we know that this king is quite safe over there and the rooks are not ready to attack there yet and white have very active pieces so uh, the definitely that was the way to go however here uh, I don't know if Levitsky calculate that or not but he played queen on h5 and this is actually a losing move but but again black has only one move which is winning so feel free to pause the video one more time and this time find the winning continuation for black while I enjoy my cup of tea So the only winning move for black is rook e on f8 okay putting more pressure on f2 and actually it's not only the pressure it's the winning continuation so for example if white plays something like whatever a4 then the problem is rook f2 and now if rook f2 then we're gonna have a checkmate okay so that's uh, definitely unplayable uh, so what stefan levitsky found is rook on e5 rook on e5 the problem with this move is it doesn't save uh white from anything yes white rook is not under attack now and yes white protects e1 so it looks like a quite good move however the problem is rook on f2 still works 
and it can't be taken because queen can also go to a1 and that's gonna be a checkmate so what would have to be played for example rook f on e1 but it also doesn't help so first black play king on h8 getting away from uh, this check that that would be a check with tempo a quite important one very precise move and now what white could try to do is move the queen back to defense but it doesn't really matter knight on c2 and as you see now this would be attack with the tempo now it doesn't really matter and white don't have good move if something like move the rook from the fifth rank to the second one it doesn't work because queen c5 and now what black do is threaten the checkmate with the double check here and there is not really a defense here so a rook on f2 queen on f2 and now king h1 knight e1 and of course a black is winning and uh, checkmate is coming so whatever queen d4 the only maybe way uh, to sacrifice the queen but black don't need to take it queen f1 uh, queen g1 now knight d3 and that's gonna be a very fancy checkmate so uh, if queen is taken then of course we have a checkmate and if any other moves is play then that's gonna be a checkmate so uh, this doesn't help this rook e5 doesn't help but frank marshall wanted to make something spectacular he didn't play that move he had more fancy plan uh, so he played rook on h6 threatening the queen so queen have to be moved queen g5 and now another great move rook on h3 so winning the minor piece of course it can be taken because uh, that would be the fork winning the queen so it's impossible so uh, what white play is rook on c5 attacking the queen okay and we reach the position uh, where black has a chance to play the move which gonna be considered as one of the top three best moves in the chess history so can you imagine that feel free to pause the video and find this magnificent move this is really really something mind-blowing spectacular and I'm gonna give you one hint because Frank Marshall wrote that was the most elegant move I have ever played okay why I enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so if you knew that game already so that's not the problem for you but if you see this game for the first time that's the sum challenge Frank Marshall believe me or not but play queen on g3 bang and this is just incredible so let's see what's going on uh, in this position so black definitely threatens the checkmate on h2 and uh, white controls g3 three times can you imagine so the pawn controls the pawn controls and the queen controls uh, this square so uh, what's the problem here if h takes on g3 we have knight on e2 and this is checkmate because the rook controls the h file and if f takes on h3 it also doesn't work for the very similar reason knight e2 and then we're gonna have the checkmate on the first rank and finally queen on g3 also doesn't work because knight e2 with check the only move is king on h1 now getting back the queen knight on g3 and now of course the pawn can take because it's pinned but this pawn also can take because there's gonna be a checkmate here so the only way to play for white is king on g1 and then knight on e2 again with check king h1 and now rook c3 and black are up the piece so of course this is winning for black so what a spectacular move this is uh, why in this position stefan levitsky resigned the game and this is why frank marshall wrote in his book that the spectators showered him with gold pieces so whatever you believe it's true or not this move is just spectacular okay one of the top three moves in the chess history the the other two are the uh, bobby fisher 13 years old bobby fisher played in his game of the century 
there is the the link so you can check it very very nice very spectacular game as well bishop e6 this is this spectacular move and i think is uh, by nesh medinov uh, playing queen takes on f6 this is another sacrificing the queen this is also very spectacular very deep thinking and uh, and i will cover that game uh, maybe even soon so if you don't want to miss that press subscribe smash the bell button and press like if you like this video or unlike if for some reason you don't like this game but i don't see any reason thanks for watching and see you in the next one